Hey guys, what's up? Welcome to the channel or welcome back to the channel. Today we've got a super productive one for you, a super honest one for you. We will be talking about the top 10 reasons not to move to Denver in 2023. All right, let's check it out, guys. What's up guys, I'm Eli Schmidt. This is my business partner, Will Grimes. And if it's your first time checking out the channel, welcome. And hey guys, don't forget to hit that subscribe button while you're here, because we're dropping a new video every Tuesday and every Thursday, telling you everything you possibly could want to know about moving to or living in the entire Denver, Colorado area. 100% and we are licensed brokers here in the state of Colorado, which means just as much as we love making these videos, we would love more to help with those real estate needs. Yeah. So that number that's popping up below are the guys who answer the phone calls, text messages, and those emails. So if we can help you, we would love to. But with that being said, speaking of telling you everything there is to know about moving to or living in Denver, it's sometimes even unpopular topic. And, and just full disclosure, this might be a super popular topic for you because if you guys can get through these 10 and really not have any of these affect you or, or change your mind and at least you'll know you're making a great decision. Absolutely guys. So in no particular order, starting off with probably the first one that you're going to be thinking about when you're coming out here. And that's like, Hey, what's the affordability like in Denver, Colorado? Mm -hmm. Now to give you guys just a little bit of like actual data. Okay. So Denver housing prices are where you're going to find the highest gap as far as cost of living. Okay. The cost of living outside of housing prices is honestly pretty much on par with the rest of the national averages, right. but our housing specifically is going to be roughly 30% higher than the national average, but also 30% lower than some of the other major cities like New York, Chicago, Southern, and, uh, California. Southern California. We, we tend to run consistently 30% lower than like Southern California. So yeah. we're 30% higher than the national average, but we're still 30% lower than some of the ones that have just been around a long time that have the reputation for just being more expensive. So yes. if that gives you guys any context on just being right in the middle of like that upper mm -hmm. echelon section of desirable places to live. Well, and to put these into some real numbers for you guys, so we're not just talking percentages and stuff, but hey, things you can actually relate to, you know, looking at the Denver metro area as a whole, which that's going to be Denver and then pretty much an hour radius surrounding it, pretty much encompassing all the major metro cities that are around here. Mm -hmm. To get into something, a single family home that's decent, livable, hey, you're proud to call it home, you're looking right around that 550 mark to start off, okay? Correct. Now, of course, like there's going to be, you know, some little variances going lower, or of course, if you're looking at townhomes or condos, there's exceptions there too. Correct. But just to give you guys a little perspective as far as real numbers. Right. And as you guys obviously get further away from the city, mm -hmm. you just get more square footage. Yep. Not to yeah. not to give you a cliff note, but as you guys know, a lot of these newer developments out in Southeast Aurora, Castle Rock, Castle Pines, Arvada, Thornton and beyond, Erie, Brighton. Some of those places have huge homes, smaller lots. Some of them have huge homes, huge lots. It really just kind of depends on what you guys are going for. A couple unspoken heroes that, have, that are starting to be developed. Elizabeth, yeah, yeah. Franktown. The prices are getting expensive depending on, how, on the type of home that you guys are buying, but you're getting a lot of bang for buck out there. Some of those areas even have like neighborhood farms where you can get like your milk and your eggs and your... Yeah. Yeah, that's cool. Just your poultry, like for the neighbor, like it'll they'll deliver it to your door from the local farm in the neighborhood. Like really cool stuff. So it really just comes down to like what you guys want. Are you looking for more of that? Or are you guys looking for more in the city? Obviously you guys know we have a ton of videos that cover a ton of different topics. So if you guys are just now coming to the channel, definitely have some fun bed watching some of the topics and really get a feel for what you guys are looking for. And then what those prices are. Now, while we're on the topic of homes, let's talk lot sizes, okay? Now, when we're getting people that are moving here from the Midwest or Texas, or oftentimes East Coast as well, a half acre to an acre to an acre and a half lot is, is kind of normal out there. Mm -hmm. And guys, you're just not gonna find that out here unless you're really going on the outskirts or really starting to push you know, a million dollar plus as far as your price point. For the average lot out here, I'd say it's gonna be anywhere from 8,000 to 10,000 square feet. So that's just under to maybe about a quarter acre or so. Correct, and the way that you guys can utilize the landscape that you do have, people get pretty creative. And you also don't necessarily need as much big yard unless that's just a thing that you gotta have because of how much recreation they have as far as like paths that go through neighborhoods, the local parks that are inside of each neighborhood within a block of your house. They literally have little small parks in addition to the big parks for kiddos within like like a block or two of your house. The recreation centers for neighborhoods with the large pools and the fitness centers. Yep. You guys are getting a lot of stuff within like the community areas. So you don't necessarily need a huge lot for your own recreation. Again, unless that's just your, your thing that you have to have on your property. 
Well, and quick little story time for you guys. We were just out with uh, some clients from our YouTube channel, Steven and Morgan, shout out to you guys. We just went under contract on a new build down in the Terrain neighborhood of Castle Rock this past weekend. We were and, just talking about Terrain. Yep, yep. And when we were comparing two homes that they were deciding between, one of them had a significantly bigger lot than the other one, and it was about 60 grand higher in price point. And when we were asking just kind of our, our questions to them, you know, one of my questions was, hey, how often are you guys utilize the outdoor space? Are you like diehard backyard entertainment? entertainment people or is it, hey, we want to put the dogs out and have a place for the kids to sit down and play or something. Yep. And they were like, they came from the East Coast where they had a big lot and they're like, you know what? We had a big lot, we didn't utilize it at all. And they're like, frankly, we picked Castle Rock because of all the trails, because of all the parks and stuff like that. So they're like, we're gonna be using that stuff. We don't need, necessarily need a bigger backyard. Which is great, great decision. And here's what's great once we start getting out and looking at homes and just knowing what you guys qualify for a person, right? Because when you're looking at a $60,000 difference between homes, not only can you guys just ask yourself a question whether it's gonna be utilized or not, or whether it's better for resellability, whatever it may be, you can also do the math and just go, hey, is this home, and this extra lot size worth $213 more a month than the other, or $337 more a month than the other. And you guys can run that, right? Obviously you guys know a lot of our uh, our preferred lender, Scott Leffert does a great job, but that's always fun as well, because when we're thinking $60,000 or $100,000, it sounds big, it is big. The tangible side of, hey, is this home and this lot worth $313 more a month than this home? I feel like that makes it way more tangible and it just creates some clarity behind the decision that you guys wanna make. And you go, you know what? Hey, we'll just, we'll cook at home a little bit more and go out a little bit less often and enjoy the backyard that we want. That's where you'll save some of that money and it gets you to your decision. So whether it's, hey, we just know we're not gonna use it or if it's a financial thing where you guys can just save some money or save some money by spending a little extra money for the lot that you guys wanna use. Either way, turning these stones and making these decisions definitely needed. Moving on, let's talk a little bit about our scenery, our landscape, particularly our greenery. Okay, mm -hmm. now what you're gonna find, and, and we've heard this just in passing from a couple of people, not a big deal, but just an observation, because Colorado is so dry, there's not a ton of green out here. Once we start getting into the springtime, like right now, we're, we're just starting to come into May, we'll right? We're starting to get green. It's gonna be real green up until about, what, July, August, you know, and then maybe yeah. through and September. Get, well, and then you, but then you also get color change for fall, so it yes. still makes maintains yeah, its green, yeah. but then you get the reds and you get the oranges, which is phenomenal. The mountains tend to stay super, super green, yeah. but you guys have to remember maybe half the state is the Rocky Mountains. The other half is more flat plain. So it still has a ton of high elevation, which is where some of the dry climate comes from. But when you start getting out to the outskirts of Denver, just city and county of Denver, and if you run that line north and south across the entire state, once you start hitting Denver and east, it's a lot more flat. You still have amazing views of the mountains, but you're just not in the mountains. But again, because of that, if you guys look at our sister states of Kansas and Nebraska, a lot of it's gonna be reminiscent of that, not that extreme, right? right. right? So it's not gonna be this. I expected the Rocky Mountains to be a little rockier than this. That John Denver's full of shit, man. John Denver is definitely not full of crap, right? Like we definitely have an amazing view. You guys have a lot of fun, but as far as like just the immediate area where, where the soil's at, like you're gonna have a little bit more dry, a little bit less green, but you'll have a view of it a lot. But fall definitely keeps some things green and color change for a little while. As long but, as people are watering their grass out here, yeah, it's green. It's as, great. As soon as you turn those sprinklers off. The fall's also not very long out here. You're probably gonna yeah, get sure. four weeks of fall out here. The trade off on that, just to get a positive, obviously you guys know we're fans of Colorado. The positive is we have more sunny days than any state in the country. So even even when we are in winter, even when there's a little bit less green, whatever it may be, like you still got the sun out and there's still a lot of things that you guys can do. Some states, they might have a little bit more green if you guys go to like the upper northeast, but once winter hits, it's staying and it ain't going anywhere yeah, yeah. until it's no longer winter. And you guys know like with just busy roads and dirt and the, the snow starts turning super dark brown and black just because of all the, the grit from vehicles and the snow never really leaving. So not you here. can't, oh, not coast, right, right on yeah. the east coast. So you guys just kind of have to pick your battles when it yes. comes to that. So definitely not a huge deal, but something to think about. Well, yeah, and the flip side to that is, hey, if you guys are into golfing, which a ton of people are in Colorado, there's mm -hmm. golfing year round. Well, and the reason why there's golfing year round and the reason why we still have a lot of great grass year round is because we've got the Colorado River, we've got the Rocky Mountains with all the other water in it. We feed like four states of water, right? Like feed their water. So as far as like, we have restrictions when it's extreme heat out and things like that for watering your yard, but Colorado's great with their overall, just us having water. So your golf courses and everything like that tend to stay pretty good.
All right, now moving right along, let's talk downtown Denver. Mm -hmm. If you guys are coming from a big city and you're used to a big city and you're looking for a big city, you might be a little surprised at how small downtown Denver like actually it's, feels. Yeah, it's big, but it's small at the same time. Yeah. I don't think anybody will, will call it small unless you're coming from Chicago, Dallas, or something like that. So it's definitely growing. I think the other the other comment for that as well is like, we also just only have like the one, right? Like you've got Denver Tech Center just outside of Denver. That's more of like a tech center. It's all corporate stuff. It's all yeah. corporate, it's all professional, but you've got some good restaurants. You've got some cool things in the Springs. You've got Fort Collins and Boulder, yeah. but they're not downtowns. But like, if you guys were in a state, just use Florida, for example. You've got Tampa Bay. You've got Orlando. Mm -hmm. You've got Miami. Mm -hmm. You've got St. Augustine. Mm -hmm. If you guys are looking at Texas, you've got Houston, Dallas, San Antonio, Fort Worth, not Dallas, Fort Worth. You guys are picking up what I'm putting yeah. down. Colorado has Denver. So it's yeah. it's got a lot of food. Yep. It's got some nightlife to it and things like that, but it's got Denver, right? Yep. So it's an intermediate level downtown. It's it's a great time, but that's, hey, we've got one. We don't have four and things like that. So depending on where you guys are at in the state, that's like, you know, kind of your in and out. What I do love is because of how well our traffic structure has been set up and them just understanding how much population was coming here, our traffic flow is great. So if you guys are getting in and out of downtown for basketball games, football games, baseball games, a show, whatever it may be, like even though we've only got one, definitely a, a pro, even though this isn't a pro, video per se. A pro is that it doesn't get overly congested the way you might think because we've only got one place for everybody right. to go. It's yeah. actually really smooth, a lot better than some states that have four places to go. Yeah, very true. Moving on from that, let's talk walkability in regards to downtown, okay? So again, if you're coming from a big city, a lot of it's gonna be very walkable. The mass transit mm -hmm. might be really robust. In Colorado, you're gonna need a car. It's a driving state. Even if you live right downtown, hey, maybe you have a, a condo on 16th Street Mall and you work on 16th Street Mall. Great, you're good, get from there to work. But the second you wanna go and Explore some restaurants, go on a hike, go have some fun. You're gonna need a ride. And in addition to needing it, you're gonna also like, I mean, I'm just Mr. Positive State. You're gonna want to have that vehicle yeah, yeah, because you're yeah. gonna want to go to the mountains. You're gonna want to go out and do some different things and explore just the different things that in and around the Denver metro area. So guys, if you're coming here, expect to have a car, get a four wheel drive car. Oh, right. look at you. I have further enhanced my position if you if you listen to videos a couple of years ago. You don't have to listen. Being a good friend, I'm just gonna tell you exactly what he said. He said in 1988, two wheel drive Honda Civic is more than acceptable <laughs> in the state of Colorado. Not more than acceptable. I said, hey, if that's what you got, don't expect to drive any bad snowstorms. But once you get here, yes, get a four wheel drive. Absolutely. <laughs> any other couples out there like just realize when they're a significant other working partner just makes it a lot less uh, of what right. it actually was when he said it in the first place. The fact that he was even saying it. Honda there's front wheel drive. There's plenty of people here with those. Um, if you have a Honda Civic with studded tires <laughs> and you still get stuck, I just call this number because we're here to help you. Just make sure you're asking for Eli that's right, that's and right. what came out of his mouth. I'll call Good to AAA go? for you. Yes. But this is a sign of maturity. I, I said I, I'm furthering enhance my position, right? I, I've grown, I've evolved. We're not growing because we're, we're fighting on camera. I'll tell you that much. If you guys know us from, from the beginning, anytime I can score a point on Eli, I'm gonna do it. So we haven't grown there, but we have grown as far as population. We have grown as far as like, just everybody getting here and realizing how much that they want to do, which means we have grown in the understandability of you guys just making sure you've got an adequate vehicle for all weather. That's right. Now, one more point to the small downtown. It is ever growing, okay? Mm -hmm. So like the Rhino area, for example, River North, that used to be just a small kind of art district with some graffiti murals on the wall. Now it is so big and oh, yeah. it is expanding out like crazy. Some of these places that were just, you know, railroad yards 10 years ago, there's new restaurants, there's new bars, there's new co-working spaces. They're really utilizing every square inch yeah. of Denver. And as you guys know, right, anytime commercial is gonna grow like that, then the residential is gonna reflect. So yeah. a lot of those older homes that are in the Five Points area, that are in the River North area, you're gonna have some redeveloped homes that are there. You're gonna have some scrapes and some brand new homes that are put yeah. there. So that entire area is really getting a great vibe and it's attracting a lot of folks that really want that heart of Denver feel, but still being able to have that single family home opportunity, right? Because a lot of things in downtown, you're just not getting the opportunity of having that. It's townhomes and condos. A lot of areas downtown just don't even have that. It's just more hotels, but River North, one of the closest spots you can get to being downtown, yeah. but yet still having a yard if you choose to in a single family home. Five points, very similar. You've got some old Victorian homes that are down there, but love it when commercial makes that adjustment. 
because of what it does for residential. And one thing I also want you guys to keep in mind is Denver, they hold their integrity to the historic districts. So yeah. when things are getting remodeled or refurbished, there's a certain level that has to be remodeled and reestablished and cannot be torn down because they want that old downtown Denver feel and that culture to stay. So it's not just getting rid of everything, but a lot of the reason why people love Denver is a lot of what's staying in Denver, which I think is really cool because they're really holding the integrity of that as we grow. Now let's talk hobbies and activities, okay? Now you may be asking, hey, what's negative about the hobbies and activities that are out there? And not so much negative, but just something that you guys should be aware of is that, you know, out in Colorado, the skiing, the snowboarding, the snowmobiling, the going to the mountains, the kayaking, all that stuff, there is so much outdoor stuff to do here, but be prepared to spend some money on it, okay? Like those aren't cheap hobbies, right? It's not cheap to go skiing, gotta get planned for it. There's a two hour drive to the mountains, even with road biking out here, like, man, there's just some expensive sports that are out here. I feel like people make it expensive. They do, I know, they you do. Don't need a 20 thousand dollar road bike so you can be in the fast lane in traffic and holding your thumb out right like you don't need all spandex that. yeah depending on how serious of a rider you are also i think more important just understand that it gets a little bit expensive because everything is seasonal so if, if you're coming from florida and, yeah. and your hobby is golf you can golf year round you've got maybe some expensive equipment mm -hmm. but you've got one set of equipment if you're wanting to golf year round in colorado that's going to go into an extreme sport depending on how what day you're going out in the winter right like you're just going to have some of those days that are just extremely cold or snowy and it's not necessarily adequate or fun but maybe that's the time where you're wanting to ski and snowboard and do some other things. Springtime, getting up into the mountains and kayaking, mountain biking, or just hiking trails, things like that. I feel like if you're an active person and you just love a variety of hobbies, I feel like depending on the money you're spending per hobby, it can get expensive because you could very easily have four hobbies out here in Colorado versus like that one. But that's also kind of like a benefit, right? Like I feel like I'm getting stuck on the positive side today, but it could also be a positive because you guys just have so much more to do here if you'd like to, but definitely some costs involved. Well, and that's what people say all the time. A lot of times when people are coming from a certain place, there was one thing that they were doing out there and now they're excited to take up all these other hobbies. And just a little pro tip for you guys, there's a ton of really, really good equipment rental places out here. Uh -huh. So don't feel like you need to go and spend five grand on some skis go rent a bunch of different pairs and see which one you like. Instead of just getting a one day ski pass, spring for the season pass. It's honestly not that much more. If you use it more than like three or four times, it's, it you're good to yourself. go. I think it's yeah. three or I think it's four that if you go up there four times, any more time that you go is pretty much free because it would be the same yeah. as general admission, right? Which is, and also just as a reminder, since I'm gonna be Mr. Positive today, there is so much stuff you guys can do that costs you nothing, right? All the national parks we have, we have more parks per capita than any other state in addition to more sun. Plenty of things you guys can do, pack the kit ups and make, make a little bit of food at home and go out and have a lot of fun. Like Philip S. Miller Park in Castle Rock, that's free. Yep. The Incline, that's free. Rocky Mountain National Park, that's free. Going to Estes Park, going to Silverthorne, wherever you guys wanna go, it's free, minus if you wanna purchase some food or things like that, but the hikes, the views, all that stuff is costing you no money to get out. It's more so just the money you wanna spend on the equipment with a bike or the golf clubs that you guys have. And that's the fun part, honestly. Now, as far as what to expect, as far as like the housing and developments that's out here, guys, expect a lot of new construction, okay? Some people that are moving here, especially on East Coast, there's like, you know, old brick ranches, and that's kind of like the norm that people are used to. You're gonna find some of that in like Littleton, West Lakewood, and some down in Denver as North well. North Aurora, a lot in Denver, yep, South yep, Park Hill. Yep. A lot, like yeah. the closer you get to Denver, the older everything is yes, that, because yes. that's where everything started, guys. So probably true to a lot of different states, or a lot of different cities, the closer you get to the downtown mm -hmm. area, the more established all of your homes are. With that new construction, there's a lot of great suburban neighborhoods, right? Some of the houses might be a little cookie cutter, you know, for you if you're looking for something just unique and like, yeah, a lot of the new, the new places, like not extremely cookie cutter where every house looks the same. Like one thing I think Colorado is really good at is that all of the local city ordinances, like for example, out here in Southeast Aurora, we were just buying a home for a family and the model that they were to pick, there couldn't be another model within five homes of them. So they're making sure that there's just not a whole row of the same yeah, homes. A lot of the exteriors are different as well. It's not yeah. just the same stucco and stone. It's yeah. like, they've got some mountain field ones, they've got some like lake house field ones. Yeah. So even if it's the same exact home on the inside per se, as far as floor plan, mm -hmm. 
the design on the inside, the countertops, your islands, your paint, all of that stuff is different, but the floor plan might be the same, but then the exterior looks different as well, which is super cool. Yeah, and with that too, you're not gonna have a whole ton of maturity within these new build neighborhoods. So if you're expecting big 20, 30 foot trees for privacy and stuff, a lot of them just aren't gonna have it. Quite not quite there yet because you guys are on the outskirts, you guys are in the Southeast Auroras, you guys are in the newer developments of Castle Rock. Yep. So the point is you just gotta find that a little bit older community, more established community, more central Denver, University Hills, Washington Park, things like that. Or if you guys are getting into like the Cows Rock, there's a couple of areas that have been around a long time, a decade or so that do have some of that, but not all of it does. I will say, because Colorado's so proactive in giving that feel, even in the backyard that we're in right now, right? Like my personal backyard, this was built within the past two years, but we've got nine foot pine trees, yeah. about nine yeah, yeah, foot. Yeah. We've got about yeah. a 14 uh -huh. foot tree. Like, so you can get some that are already just pre-planted that are a lot bigger because they've been growing on a tree farm. So it's not like it's bare boned. Now, Will hinted to this earlier, but let's talk about the overall like mountain feel or city feel of Denver, okay? Because man, if you've never been to Denver, you may think that Denver is like in the mountains or just completely surrounded by the mountains or this mountain city. Not true. You've got to go about 45 minutes west of Denver to actually get into the mountains. And as far as Denver and the metro area, there's hills and stuff. And especially as you get down to Castle Rock and Colorado Springs, the mountains come a lot further to you, right. but it's a normal kind of city goes, feel. As it goes from like west to east across the state, you got huge mountains right then it kind of gets into like foothills as it flattens out you creep into denver probably 30 minutes 35 minutes from like lookout mountain yep. from bojo's up where, where is that at? is that steamboat uh idaho springs idaho springs yeah uh, you got like a great bojo's pizza place in idaho springs a lot of those areas are still pretty close yeah. but more foothill versus like rocky mountain that you guys are thinking when we're thinking of like mm -hmm. arapaho basin aspen and all of those other cool spots yeah so again if you're expecting denver to be in the mountains it definitely is not it's gonna feel like a normal city you know downtown city and then outside of that it's kind of feel like normal kind of suburban neighborhoods and, and the pro to that is that hey if, if you don't want to live in the mountains hey all good like the mm -hmm. majority of the state is not in the mountains okay correct but if you do start living a little bit closer to the mountains golden some parts of littleton yeah, you're gonna get more inclement weather you're gonna have a little bit more of a real winter and even though the sun's out because it's at altitude and the temperature is still cold enough that snow's not necessarily melting right so you just have to understand the further you get into the mountains or close to the mountains, the gradually more your winter becomes a little bit more real than versus like the Denver Metro having snow melt in a, in a couple of days. All right, last one guys, it's just being aware that there's a growing population here. We had 80,000 plus people move here last year. Obviously we have people that are moving out as well. So there's some compensation for there. We are still a growing state. We are not losing more people than we are gaining. We are definitely gaining more people. However, one thing to keep in mind is that because we have some of these newer areas out on the outskirts of Denver Metro, there's still a lot of unincorporated. There's still plenty of room for Colorado to grow, but you're gonna be a little bit more into the plains with views or hills, but you're at elevation and views of mountains versus being right into the mountains, but something to consider. So even though our traffic highways and byways are great, even though downtown Denver, doesn't get too busy. You just have to understand it's still growing. So if you wanna be a part of a state or a community where you're not getting as much, you've gotta really go to the outskirts in Colorado or if there's other states that you're considering, I hope not. We'd love to have you here, especially if you guys are excited to be here, but just something to consider for sure. That's right, especially as you've got, like Will mentioned earlier, you know, we've kind of got just Denver as the one major downtown city here, right? However, Colorado Springs continuing to grow. Fort Collins has been the big up and comer in the past 10 years. You know, Fort Collins used to be just a college town. Now it is growing and getting bigger and bigger and bigger. So fast forward five years, 10 years, you know, I, I'm really hoping that we're gonna have some more prominent cities in Colorado. But like Will said, yeah, if you're expecting it to yeah. just kind of be sleepy and an entire town, like it definitely is not. And it's hard to tell because I know like Aurora, even though they've grown and it's got a, a huge footprint, I know that they also don't want a, like a Denver tech center in Aurora. Yeah. I know they've got some like, uh, what do you call it? Not codes or laws, but just some restrictions of certain heights on buildings that are allowed to be built in and around the area. And I think Fort Collins might so be You're not same. having skyscrapers built. You're just not gonna area. have an, an Austin yeah. or a Dallas or a San Antonio in addition to Houston. Like no. Colorado's just not structured like that. So I'd be curious if, if any did versus like just Denver getting bigger, mm -hmm. just like it has. I think one bonus one that I wanna throw in there, just kind of speaking to that a little bit more, and this is gonna be a pro for a ton of you guys, is just kind of the chill Denver attitude. You know, like 
the, the pace of living out here, like, hey, we're about our business. There's a ton of startups, a ton of tech companies, a ton of like just high energy business pace down here. But at the same time, man, people love their golf. They love their hobbies. They love It'll be a random Wednesday yeah. and everybody's just out downtown eating lunch, right? Yeah. Like, and you're like, what, yeah. what's going on? It's Wednesday. But uh, you just never know. People have that. But either way, as you guys know, we always leave you with this phone number popping up yes. below, reminding you that we are licensed brokers in the state of Colorado. And yes, just as much as we love making these videos, we would love more to help you with those real estate needs. Right. So that number is still back up below. We are the guys trying to the phone calls, text messages, and those emails. So if we can help you, we would love to. But with that being said, you guys enjoy some more of the footage. We'll see you guys in a couple of days. See you guys. Here it is, ass. Come on. I don't know how I can get so close, but I'm only looking at the camera. <laughs>